to find out anybody born in the month of May and then we're going to take some pictures photo ops and then we have dinner and then we do celebrate the birth dates and then we have Qigong who's fighting? Oh. that's okay the, the winner will get some well honor so are we we are also all honored to be able to do this once in a big blue moon all right and what is this all about? I guess this all began years ago, okay. The Southern Shaolin is not the low, less than 1,000 years old. Yeah, we're only 1,200 years old anyway. <laughs> okay, but the entire Shaolin discipline came about early, about the fourth, third, third or fourth century, old China. Okay, at that time of an old, monk came from northern India to China and then he saw the monks in the White Horse Temple in central China, Honan province, being very weak. They only did the city meditation, they couldn't defend themselves and they, they usually would be robbed when they went out or they would be killed by the wild animals. So he said this is not acceptable. You cannot just practice uh, the Buddhist principle just on the mind alone. You've got to be physically fit. So his background obviously was also a yoga master plus many uh, disciplines master. So to fit the requirement, the use of the monks at the time, he developed the first set of martial arts called the Yi Jin Jing, meaning the method of transforming the ligaments of the body. And then it developed a second form, this called the bone marrow transformation. So that way will make people live longer, younger, healthier. And then the White Horse Temple later on was renamed to Shaolin Temple. This was about the fourth century, okay, long before we were born. Some of us may be there at the time, just we are reincarnated, some of them. In fact, 
from my understanding, my feeling, I was one of the people living about 1700 years ago. Mm -hmm. Because um, the evidence was that, you know, I, wrote, I write poems. Out of so many thousand poets in ancient China, there's one particular poet. When I read his poetry, once, immediately I can recite it. Mm -hmm. So you wrote that one, you think? The only possibility is I wrote it. Wow. Yeah, so I was that person. Wow. That person, the last name was C X I E. See? Xie Tiao. Xie Tiao. So he lives uh, about 300 something AD. Okay. So in the fourth century. That's why I said I've been there 1700 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and also. And when I read all these histories over thousands of years, a lot of them is almost as if I was there. They do exist, but extremely hard to prove. So we are not pushing it. But that's not the point. The point is, over the centuries, these disciplines have been carrying on. And then by uh, many hundred years later, Shaolin was split into two because they, they had to expand, okay? At one point, about the sixth major uh, generation of the Shaolin Temple, one thing major happened. The thing that happened, this was before the Tang Dynasty, so you still talk about uh, 400, uh, 1400 to 1500 years ago, about the six, seven, six or seventh century. Okay, what happened was, at that point of time, they had to pass the, what they call the, the plate, the boot, the bow, that represent the head of the Shaolin Temple, together with the clothing. Okay, and at that generation, the fifth generation head of Shaolin Temple had trouble deciding who to pass it on to. Okay. So he put up a test a silent uh, auction almost. So I say, now here is my question. So it's up to the contenders to put the answer uh, uh, to me and then we'll select. So at the time, the oldest disciple, most powerful disciple had his own gang followers. Okay, he wrote a poem saying that the discipline is almost like dusting. You must always keep the house clean by dusting it every day to make sure it's clean and to be hard working on and on and on. But there was a cook, a monk, a very low ranking monk, who's actually a cook. And he also went out to write the poem. Somebody asked him to uh, also write the answer. And he, the answer was very simple. Okay, he said, he said, the tree is no tree. Okay, the mirror is not the mirror. In fact, in, in the long run, there's absolutely nothing. Okay, then where does this dust come from? There's no dust to clean. So what he's done is he has reached the highest level of Zen, Zen of the Southern Temple. And the fifth head of Shaolin decided to pass the rank to him, okay, secretly. But he said there's a lot of power struggle, even in the temple, fighting for the head. So he got, then he told, at midnight he just knocked at his head, dong, 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 three times, okay? And he pointed at the direction, didn't say a single word. What it meant, meant to this guy was, at this time of the night, okay, that night is actually about midnight equivalent. Come to that place, come to my place to see me, secretly. And they went there, and then they passed this to him. And he said, immediately, you don't wait until the morning, I want you to flee, go south. Okay, so he took, he took over the rank of Shaolin Temple and went down south. Okay, and then the older brother the next morning found out from the teacher, 
who have you decided to be the head, next head? He smiled. He's already left. Okay. And then he went through, and then he sent people to go after this young guy. But this guy's martial arts was very high level. Nobody could beat him. And he, then he went to Guangdong province. And then he developed a temple called the South China uh, Buddhist Temple. Okay. And in fact, his actual body, we, we went there and saw the body, was mummified. He was, and when in the last days he died by sitting meditation, the whole body never decayed. So they put a gold plate or, and things on top. So in other words, inside the, what they call it, is his real body. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah, okay, and things like that. So that is how they happen. And many hundred years passed by, but he made a decision. From his generation on, no more head of the Southern Temple. So instead, so there would be a head of a temple for every temple that exists. Okay, but no one, in other words, no Pope. No Pope, that's it, okay. So from that point on to now, no Popes. So it, when they go from temple to temple, there's a head of temple. And so they will serve them. But later on, they decided, now one thing major happened is at the beginning of the Tang Dynasty. At the beginning of the Tang Dynasty, the then prince, okay, was being surrounded by a bunch of uh, enemies. And he was about to be defeated. And the Shaolin Temple sent off 13 monks with staff with the steps and saved the prince, who later became the, the most powerful king of China, the, the founder of the Tang Dynasty. That's why people call Chinese Han or call Chinese Tang, Tang, because the empire was so powerful. And so he laid out a rule for the Shaolin monks. He said, Shaolin monks will be exempted from being vegetarians because they need for martial arts, they need to live in such cold climate weather and to be so tough, they're allowed to eat meat. So Shaolin monks can eat meat. Okay, not necessarily vegetarian. And, he, and his, uh, this thing was actually written on, um, put on the rock, and the rock still exists in the Shaolin Temple. Next time anybody who would go to the Shaolin Temple in Songshan, in Honan province, will be able to see this. It is still there, and I saw it before my eyes. As I tried to say hundreds of years later, okay, and then the part of the Shaolin Temple migrated southeast China, and it became the Southern Shaolin. So we have Northern Shaolin and Southern Shaolin. The Qigong I teach you originated from the Northern Shaolin, but as a rank, official rank, I was 20 generation or uh, disciple of the Southern Shaolin Temple. The equivalent of Northern Shaolin Temple would be about generation 34. 34. Why is our ranking so small? Two reasons. Number one, Shaolin Shaolin came into existence much later. The most important reason is our ranking is based on Qigong. And people practice Qigong live sometimes more than twice longer than those who practice pure martial arts. Average uh, of us will live beyond 90, sometimes over 100 years old. Okay? Whereas martial artists may not live that long. So that's another reason why our generations are so much smaller, 20 generations versus 30 something. Okay? So that's the history of what we do. Now, the other part that I practice is the, you know, I do acupuncture. <laughs> now, this acupuncture originated from another school. 49. <laughs> okay, this school is called the Old Mei Mountain. Old Mei. And this is a Taoist mountain. And they created this method. <clears throat> Today, I'm one of only 10 in the world because it's very secretive. We don't want to make it to public. And, and I've been observing them for quite a long while, so they don't just come easily. Okay, 
and what's the difference between a disciple and a student? Disciple is an official sounding discipline. So they carry, they have this, they're certified, they have a certificate, okay, they practice the real depth of the Qigong, and they follow the real discipline. Students also follow Qigong, but on a more general level, still do very well, okay? But disciples are authorized to have their own teachings later on, so if they want to <coughs> run their own school for whatever humanitarian reason, they're free to do so. Because they're certified. So it's a very important discipline. And as a disciple, they must follow the strict rules of Shaolin. That is to be honorable, to be honest, to be loving, to be faithful. Okay. And always follow the principle to help other people. Relentlessly. So it's very important. With that, okay. We all went through that process. I, I think myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the path three times. Three times. From now on, okay, that El Horace will become part of the family, disciple number 105. There's an English certificate and a Chinese certificate. Okay, and 105 sit on my left hand side, right is, uh, it's over there. Right. <laughs> 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 you don't need me. Okay. Yes, I love the fans. I did realize Chris has so many fans. <laughs> Thank you. Was it cheap Chinese fans? <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Come back and sit with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here I would officially proclaim also, okay, Chris Wiley to be disciple number 106. And here is certificates. I do yeah. say you. <laughs> yeah, they read they, all the words in Chinese. Yeah, they read. Give me a month or two. Yeah, we do. Sit on my right hand side. He doesn't read as well. Yin and Yang harmony. Okay, so that's the meaning of it. So let's take a good picture of all disciples. By the way, in case you haven't met, uh, I, I let them introduce you first, so before we take a picture. James, disciple number 36, he actually is our younger son. <laughs> okay. Disciple number 76, okay. Now you know what, quicker, more efficient, you introduce yourself than then I look around, look at but you, you say yourself. 102. Alex, and the name. Hanso Chow. Hanso Chen. Mighty Four Jackie. Thank you. 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 
Nothing nice, Robert. Some people call him Wing Pussy. I, I cannot see because I'm always too short, yeah? So I don't have to stand up. By the way, Robin is the best immigration consultant in all of Toronto. Wow. Yeah. In case you get kicked out of this country, look him up. I need your help. Oh, 61 Anna. Okay, no. 105 Horus. 106 Chris. We call him. 96 N. <laughs> okay, now we can take members of the disciples. Uh, I know. Oh, okay, that's a quick interview. Yes. Tell us how you feel today. Yes. Hi, this is Chris Wiley, Disciple 106 of Sifu Pauling. Today's a magical day for me, enabled me to take my, my personal life, my own self-growth to another level and taking my ability to help others and carry on the wisdom and tradition of ancient Qigong, Tai Chi, and carry on the tradition of the Shaolin Temple specifically, and really learning from a genuine master. I really relate to Sifu Pauling very much. I see all the triumphs and all the wisdom and power he evinces and I really, really respect and honor the opportunity to learn under Sifu and will use all the knowledge and wisdom that I gain to be a force for good to help other people in this world. And Tai Chi Chi Gong, it'll be a never-ending learning experience, so I'm really excited to be on the ride. Thank you. Okay, make a wish. One, two, three. Happy birthday. <laughs> One, two, three. Go, go. Happy Okay, love her count. About 55 people. 55 people. We haven't broken the record of 105 people. You have to first regulate your body, then you regulate your breathing, then you regulate your mind.
So for the first 